decade ago, there was flooding more than 40 years in Nigeria claimed 431 lives and forced nearly 2 million people to leave their homes. This year, the devastation has seen several more deaths. More than 600 people have died and thousands injured and millions of people displaced, according to the country's Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. Hundreds of thousands of houses as well as vast tracts of farmland have been destroyed. In Bayelsa alone, reports show that floods have displaced 700,000 people over, I should say has submerged some 300 communities, an indictment on the authority for not being proactive to prevent or at least minimize the disastrous impact of the floods. Floods have been ravaging many other states across the country. Uh, a rise correspondent, Uduak Patrick, reports that flood victims in two communities in River State are calling on the federal and the state governments to build structures and flood control measures to protect the people. Flood victims in Elem Sangama and Sokul communities in Akukutoru, local government area of River State, are calling for help as their houses have been submerged by the ravaging floods that have hit the state. The residents say a major cause of flooding in the area is lack of shore protection. They say if the government can also sand fill the area and build water protection structures, they could become safer in future. The people whose main occupation is fishing say they have been unable to go out to fish in the past few weeks and it has affected their livelihoods. Everything now, we need help from government. Let government come and stand feed this place. Do piling and give us constant water. Yes, we not sleep, we not see where to sleep. This is my living house. See my fish alone. And not fish safe. Fisherman with the go river, nothing, nothing. Prayer winkle, nothing. So we need help from government. Let government come and help us. Since this flood come, we have suffering for this flood. Nothing, no fish, nothing, nothing. Where to eat the warriors? Because if you don't have piling, here to here, the water is going to enter like this and worry us and kill us. So we need piling and we need help from him. Local government officials who visited the communities are seeking support for the flood affected communities. The flood has displaced so many families. You could see for yourself a lot of persons no longer stay there. As is what I've taken over their, their homes, it has increased uh, the speed of uh, hardship in this, in this place. Some economic, uh, some social uh, has been destroyed by the by the by the floods. So that is why we are here to see things for ourselves and to know what to do. Several communities in coastal states like Rivers, Bayosa, Delta, and others across the country are currently facing severe flooding due to torrential rainfall, with states like Bayelsa totally submerged. President Mohamed Buhari has ordered emergency services to provide humanitarian support and aid to states affected. So join us on the morning show as we discuss uh, the damage caused by floods so far and the measures that have been put in place to alleviate the pains of various communities. Is Dr. Femi Dowadigo, environmental sustainability consultant, and uh, Dr. Moma Gift Eke, popularly known as Moma G, a musician and victim of our other East local government area in River State flooding. Uh, good to see you again, Moma G, and Dr. Femi here in the studio. We'll start with you. Thank you. I mean, uh, Thank you, sir. what's really the cause of this flood, uh, Dr. Femi? We've heard so much, and I'm sure you've heard what the, uh, the Water Resources Minister did say, that it's got nothing to do with the Lado Dam and all of that, that it's just rainfall and all of that. And uh, I would like to also know the impacts, how you've been personally affected, Mamaji, but that will come to you afterwards, after Dr. Femi answers this question. Thank you very much uh, mm. for having me this morning. Um, because of the flood in Nigeria, because um, it's become a perennial uh, issue now for us annually, like a ritual since 2012. Um, if you recollect, in 2012, Lagos was seriously affected as well. And one of the causes is the lack of the right uh, structures. And what do I mean? Um, we need to have, we need to begin to have reservoir dams along the um, areas of uh, rivers, like River Benue, the downstream. Um, because, one of the reasons is because there is climate change. I'm happy, um, to a large extent, it's becoming clear that climate change is real. And that's as a result of excessive rainfall because of disturbance in the weather conditions from um, emission of greenhouse gases 
and deforestation. These are things that causes this flood as it, as it were. But this year's own has been met with a double dimension. I will say here that the release of water from the Lagno Dam has contributed to it. It might not be the main cause, but it has contributed to it. Because why do we have flood? It is when the water bodies overflow and the excessive water go beyond their bounds. So what the rain this year was predicted or the forecast was given by NIMET. And what did we do when NIMET told us months before now that this, there's going to be excessive rainfall, to be precise, rain that is supposed to fall in a week uh, might fall in a day. So did we prepare? Uh, I'll say no. So one of the challenges we're having in Nigeria is we're not prioritizing our, our need. We're not prioritizing what we ought to do. There, needs, there is need for structures. What I, because most dams in Nigeria are built for electrification, hydropower electricity. But now, in 12 years or in 10 years, we've not even thought of uh, having a reservoir dam because of this uh, annual uh, flood. Okay, M Mama G, have you been personally affected? Good to see you, Mama G, again. Have you been personally affected by this? Good to see you too. Um, it's, it's been horrible. It's been a very sad experience because uh, for most of us in our East local government area where our communities have been submerged by this flood, um, a lot of uh, properties and important, doc most importantly, important documents have been ruined by the flood. And I mean, it is something that uh, it's quite pathetic to know that um, our government, I mean, the federal government is not even looking through by, you know, walking by the coastal line to see how they can harness and then um, hijack this water and, you know, turn them into electricity by building dams and something to, you know, just to curb the situation. It comes year in, year out, and yet they don't... Um, they don't pay cognizance or pay attention to uh, uh, covering this situation. It's really sad because for my people and I, we, we now lack water to drink because, you know, most of the communities, we, we drink from the well, you know. So um, the wells are covered up and you can imagine the sort of disease that will emerge after this um, uh, flood, uh, you know, let's say the post flood. And apparently I'm, I'm even just not looking at that for the now um the food for the people and water to drink it's very 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 vital right now medical attention is highly required and you know places for people to lay their head and just be alive and be lively is, is somewhat like um an an, an exact i don't know how to describe it but the situation is really bad we're still in the camp uh, for me yeah i'm in my house right now in my office in port Harcourt. but what about those who do not have the sort of privilege that i have you know and um it's sad it's really sad we've been badly affected and you can imagine the post flood life you know how people would recuperate i i'm also like just imagining what is going to become a force and how we're going to be able to cope up after the flood well Mumaji, let's stay with you so far what level of support in terms of relief or humanitarian assistance um have you and the other persons who were affected been able uh, to receive What's your assessment well, of response? And well, first response? and foremost, let me thank let me thank the River State Governor uh, Yesom Wike for providing a, a billion a billion naira to the to cushion the effects. But unfortunately, you know, when situation like this come up, it's obvious that it may never be enough. You know, and so we we are still requesting and pleading for persons, individuals like successful business people, philanthropists to come to our aid. We're not seeing those aid yet because just very few, a handful of support from here and there. And then it's just so shocking that even um, with the fact that it's water all over the place, fishing business that should be flourishing is also not tough you know because of the fact that uh, the water is flowing is not stable so fishes and all of that can be caught by the people so the people can't even fend for themselves so we're also pleading that the international community i hear the other day the ambassador u.s ambassador to nigeria said they've doled out one million dollars to, to push in this effect or rather to support uh, the victims we haven't seen anything yet and with the way things are run and you know following bureaucracy and all of that we're hopeful that these things will be able to get to the people directly 
We're just being hopeful. And then we're, we're also still begging individuals who have the mindset to help to come to the aid of us as a people. And then um, it's, it's, it's really quite minute what we've seen as support. Thank you, Dr. Adegoke. Let me come to you. Now, in this whole narrative, name it has been quoted as saying that they give early warning signals as far back as September 13, after getting notification from uh, the uh, Cameroonians that water was going to be released from Lagoda. Nimet and the Nigerian Hydrological Service Agency also said, look, there will be heavy rainfall. But that uh, the states refused to do anything. So there's been that blame game. The other day also, after the Federal Executive Council meeting, federal government officials were saying, the people themselves are the problem. And they were warned that there will be heavy rainfall and that they should move from low-lying plains to higher ground. But that Nigerians don't always listen when you give them uh, advice. Okay, given the fact that we have had this problem perennially, what could both the state governments or the uh, affected persons in the low plain, low lying plains, what could they have done within the short uh, space that at their disposal? Well, thank you very so much. So that we don't come here next year and government will still say, oh, we want them. They refused. We told the state governments they didn't do anything. Uh, thank you very much, sir. I'll, I'll put uh, more blames on the government because the truth is that we, why do we allow settlements in the floodplain in the first place? Why do we always want to do, get the problem and then we now say we are, we're working and looking after the problem? Why can't we mitigate and the problem does not even occur in the first place or minimize the problem? So what am I saying in essence is, as far back as the 1970s in Nigeria concerning the Lagdo Dam, Nigeria was supposed to build a dam called the Ausa Dansi Dam along the Makodi downstream, uh, upstream of the the Benue River, that has not been done up to date. And the record has it that that dam was actually supposed to be a reservoir dam, which when water is released at the Lago Dam, this will retain it. Because there's a difference between a dam built for um, hydroelectric power, because that it is to maximize water for electrification. But for the reservoir, for the um, flood control, it is to keep it as low as possible when there is no rain, when there is no flood, so that when the flood comes, uh, when the flood comes, this reservoir will serve as a retainer. But what do we have up to date? No dam has been built al along that uh, coastal line, upstream or downstream of the Benue River. So what am I saying? The government is saying that they told the people to move, the people are stubborn and all of that. How long do they have? As the government made provision for a temporary settlement, or should they just move to open space? Those are things, when NIMED gave these instructions or this forecast, what did the government itself do? The government did nothing. And we need to plan ahead because we've had this for 10 years. If reservoir dams had been built or had been started between 2012 and date, at least would have completed one. Using Nigerian factor, we would have completed one in 10 years. And the dams that were supposed to be built in the 1970s till today, nothing has been done. So the truth is, yeah, we can blame the people to, a lot, to some extent, but I, I think this responsibility falls on the table of the government across state, local, and the federal. The truth is, our government needs to have a change of heart. We need attitudinal and behavioral change across board. Yet, yeah, other things that cause this flood is indiscriminate dumping of waste. Because people see a, how many states in Nigeria have a proper waste management system. We must tell ourselves the truth. We don't, and when rain falls, that is when people think, oh, we can throw our dirt, our rubbish, our refuse in the drains and that clogs the drains. So the management of the drain, the proper drainage system, needs to be done by government. Okay. Uh, part of solutions also would be, could it also be before, because our water bodies 
are quite very, very shallow. Most of our rivers. Could that also be a problem? And how can we start to solve that problem? So even if we have a lot of water and accumulates more. And Momaji, I'll come to you, but Dr. Adegoke will answer this first. With the question of, uh, what did you see, you know, as you left to Port Harcourt for safety? What did you see? Give us an on-the-spot assessment of what you saw on ground. What is it now like? How many relief centers are in your local government are order? How many relief centers? How many people died that you heard of? I mean, on the ground assessments. We'll, we'll come back to that. The extent of damage, homes submerged. We want to, a blow by blow, account. we'll come back to you on that. But, uh, Dr. Adegoke, please, can you answer that first? Sorry, what was, what was your question again? On the rivers, you know, okay, what okay, can okay, we okay, do yeah, to yeah. our water bodies? Because a lot of them are quite very shallow. Yeah, but, yeah, we, like I said, if, when proper structures are put in place, we will have the, like, for example, the Benway River is not accessible all year round. But if it is dr properly dredged, and then we have um, a reservoir dam. Why is it not accessible all year round? Because there, there are times when it's dry. And it's really shallow. Yes, it's shallow and it's dry. So if we dredge it, it can retain more water. And the, I, I insist, there has to be a reservoir dam that needs to be built along the Makodi um, upstream of the river Benue. Because this was actually planned for in the 70s, but it was abandoned. So we are reaping the fruit of not prioritizing our needs. So like you said, our rivers are shallow. I'll give you a quick example. Lagos, if you look, go on the Todd Milan Bridge presently, if you look at the water level of the lagoon, it has risen seriously. And it is because of the overflow. But Lagos is only, I can say, just lucky now because to a large extent, we are able to contain it. Um, is Lagos lucky? There were some floods in the lowland area. Didn't you see the videos? Yeah, I, I saw it. I saw it. I, I get really, I get really. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, we saw it. But what, I'm, what I mean by lucky is it's been minimal compared to what we've seen in the past. The Lekki axes, the Aja axes are were not affected this time around. But the truth is, our water bodies need proper structure and management. We need to manage them properly. Because climate change is real, there's going to be uh, excessive rainfall. So when we get this forecast, we don't go to sleep. In Nigeria today, there are no more than one or two states that have a proper drainage management system, a solid waste management system. Not even the ones we're saying that they have. It is just, you know, something to go by. A lot of them have what we call dump site everywhere. Open dumps everywhere. And people help themselves as well by dumping their refuse in the drainage channel, in the canals. And these blocks, and it comes back to us. The saying that when you throw it, it goes. It doesn't go anywhere. Whatever you throw to the environment is what the environment will throw back to you. So it's, so, a, it's a boomerang effect. Uh, yeah. Let me come to Momaji. Momaji, on the ground account, blow by yeah. blow account, what's on ground? How many people have lost their lives, sadly, or do we have casualties, homes? You know, the number, just a blow by blow, so we can know the extent of the damage. Actually, uh, we've we lost over, over, over we, we can't say exactly, but we've been over like 700 persons dead, including children, mostly children. And um, the east-west road cut into two and many uh, vehicles come in by. Uh, the initial state did not know that that had happened. And then everybody, both children, pregnant women in the buses fell into the ditch. And that was the end of their lives. You know, most of the uh, bodies were recovered and then some we couldn't, some went afloat. That was why they were able to recover them, but some we couldn't up until now. And in the support villages as well, you know, accidents several times had occurred where uh, persons feel that they might be safe being on a, on a high rising building and then it collapses, you know. So the television has not been able to capture enough because they can't go to the hinterland all the time. Um, but it's really sad. We we have over we have over um, ten um, 
camps. Um, but they are overcrowded now. We need we need more, but we can't even figure out places because the schools are in session and most of the camps are situated in schools and in churches. And we don't even just have space enough. I, I, I feel I feel I feel depressed, I feel sad, I I, I feel um, highly disappointed in our federal government because my state government is doing well to push in the effect. My local government chairman, the Ahoda East local government chairman, Ahoda West local government chairman, they're running health as scatter. They go to the camps like virtually every day. We have this um, political leader from my place, um, Honorable Edison, right? Honorable Edison, a year. He is on the road every day going from camp to camp to give relief materials, to inspect the people, to make sure that lives are safe. But the federal government needs to not just send in people to investigate or to, to, to check out visually what's happening. They should make impact. They should be able to uh, uh, come up with help for us. The federal government hasn't done anything to push in the effect of this on the people. And it's really sad because it's government of the people, for the people, and by the people. So this is democracy. When a thing like this happens, we expect the federal government to have sent people to rescue us as a people, as the communities are suffering. People are cooking inside the river because even the camps, the IDP camps, are not enough to accommodate people. Okay, I'll come back to you, uh, Muma J. While uh, you catch your rebbe, Dr. Adegoke, at some point, talking about the rivers in Nigeria, the Nigerian government had this river basin development authorities, Authority. right? Yeah. These uh, river basin development authorities were supposed to help manage the water resources. What happened to those uh, river basin development authorities? Well, in, thank you, sir. It's, um, it's the same story <coughs> across Nigerian sectors. Um, the Nigerian uh, River Basin Authority, uh, I think uh, they are all gone moribund, just like uh, the case of most of Nigerian government-owned uh, um, agencies. Not, not a lot of them are doing what they're supposed to do. And that is why I always say that we all have to take responsibility as a people, as government, all stakeholders, most take responsibility uh, because if I know I live in a floodplain area or flood prone area, I should be able to know, have information or who is responsible. So it has to be from the people to the local government, to the state and to the federal government. It's a collective responsibility or else we continue losing life, properties every year. We, there is action, we need to call them out. We need to call them out and ask for them to take their role. Like in Lagos, they have, we have drainage, um, drainage management under the uh, Lagos State Ministry of Environment. To a large extent, we see them work, but all over the country, we don't see that because I'm not sure Lagos State has a right to manage some uh, water bodies. It has to come from the Federal uh, River Basin Authority. I, all, all I'm just saying is that we, these um, authorities are not doing what they're meant to do. The question, when Naimet gave that forecast, what did the other adjoining uh, responsible or authorities or agencies, what did they do? They just went to sleep. Mm. Mm. Okay, Mumaji, this uh, flooding happens again and again and again and again. What is different this year? And given what you have experienced this year, are you even considering maybe relocating from that part of the country? <laughs> we cannot leave our homes. And the difference between 2012 and the current flood um, situation is that it's worse this year. It's like um, five times what happened in um, 2012. And it's really, it's, it was really, it took us unaware. It was really pathetic. It is really pathetic. It, I'm, I'm sad that even communities that vehicles just run in and run out, now we use canoe to go, to go into the community. You know, you can't even, what I can see people, I can see people watching on TV is a, is a low water area where people can see walking. And I'm sure this is an old video because currently, the water has gone so far that no human can even stand on the water. 
and then in some areas like the outer part of it is beginning to look like it wants to dry up but the hinterland we still have it real like worse than as in worse worse as in worst case scenario hmm. so actually let me start from you that means the water has not receded in that area what is also this i'm hearing about politicization some people uh, you know just sent me messages that uh, they are rejecting relief materials from the opposition party in the states too that want to be part of the relief material should we politicize this at this point in time like this you know when all of, all of this is happening why why should we rub in politics to this when we need to save lives we shouldn't rub in politics on this I don't know what state that story is coming from, but definitely not from Ahoda East local government area. So, because they say in river states, that's what the people that sent me messages are saying, that the opposition party is not allowed to give relief materials, that the state government is just saying that um, they should run the show and everything. Since I think it should be a collaborative well, effort. Well, well, not in Ahoda East at all. Because I left home only when I got a call that I'll be on, on, on TV this morning. I left home yesterday night. As of yesterday night when I left Ahoda East to Port Harcourt, there has not been any, any situation recorded like that. We can't be stupid at this point to reject relief materials coming from any person. Because before politics, we are a people. We are a people. And there, there is a unity in diversity in River State. So no one can tell me that they are rejecting relief materials going to the IDP camps because they come from the opposition. No way. No way. And you know, people just tell a lot of stories, different stories, when things like this happen. Instead of thinking about but the pathetic situation with the, with the victims and with the persons involved. Because actually some of us have the honor and privilege to have homes in we at least we're able to build a house like, like myself, build a house in Port Harcourt, and that is why you see me talking this way. Otherwise, imagine my home just being like what uh, Dr. Yowu said that, um, um, well, where you said it, that the government, a uh, federal government warned the people and expected the people to have moved. Moved to where? I don't even understand how politicians will sit on, on leadership seats at the federal level and assume things. It just automatically makes us feel like they 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 not uh, they 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 not they are insensitive. They like like the people in governance are insensitive to humanity. How could you say that people should move out of their homes without you making provision to an interim place where they could be? You're not even thinking about the logistics of pulling their their living room uh, 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 properties, their bedroom, their kitchen, and all of that. Where do you expect them to go? What where is the time? When these two cousins are aware, when did it, where, where, is it, where is it on the record that the federal government want my people of Ahoda East that we should move out? We didn't, we didn't get such one. Okay. And even if we got such one, where, where do you expect us to move to? And then this thing is a natural disaster. It's not a thing that is within any manpower uh, uh, control. It's a thing that come boom and that's it. And then everybody is displaced. Everybody is disorganized. Okay. We okay. have land everywhere, landed properties everywhere, owned by the federal government that they can create like a like a, a village, like a, a flood, a flood village or something, while they go around the, the coastal area, going through in you know, Ahoda is going through the uh, uh, river Sombrero and building us uh, 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 dams and structures to cushion the, 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 the flood or the effect of the flood. You know, I, 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 you can even like Convert it into electricity where suffering lack of light and then you know government is not innovative and that is why some of us are getting into politics i'm not getting into politics living music or living entertainment industry because i want to be a politician i'm not a conventional politician i'm going into politics rather i'm into politics to ensure that we come up with the creative ideas to e effectively function and give the people what is desirous of them or what is deserved of them oh, okay mama, my good politician is cliche it's cliche to say to sit in governance in abuja and you give orders that people in communities and other issue move their okay, things okay, because you expect okay. flood where do you expect them to move to okay mama G, i just want to check are you a member of the pdp what's your political leaning what political party well, are well, you? I was a member of the APC until like a month ago. I defected into PDP because of several, a few reasons. Best known okay. To me. Okay. Real quickly, please, Dr. Degoke, we have just two minutes to go. People like Momaji, that their homes have been flooded. Once the water starts to recede, they would like to go back to their homes. 
but they may have cases of reptiles and even the integrity of their building. What should they do real quickly? Well, what should be done quickly as soon as the water is, uh, is residing, uh, receding, the government needs, or the local government or state government who is responsible needs to go into that area and make sure fumigating, making it safe for people to return. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Adegoke, and thank you very much, uh, Mumaji. Thank you.